Are you ready? If the Lord comes back today, welcome to Feed My Sheep Discipleship Training. It is a privilege to be laborers together with you in the harvest field. I'm Reverend Amaro. Everyone calls me Lori. God wants you to be rich. Do you believe that, Michelle? Oh dear, sounds like we're going to open a can of worms today. Well, I believe God's definition of rich and man's definition of rich may not be the same thing. Oh, I'm smiling at that. That was a pretty good answer. I took a quick reading of just a handful of pastors. Their net worth, it totaled into the billions. They will tell you that God wants them to be rich. And we hear them quote Jeremiah 29 11 to back up their claim. And this is what they quote. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hmm, God has plans to prosper you. Well, who could dispute that? But is that really what the original text says? Or are they reading from a modern so-called translation that doesn't always stick to the original Hebrew or Greek? Let's open the King James Bible, Michelle, and see what it says. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Oh, that's interesting. There's a major difference between prosperity and peace, and hope and a future is very vague compared to an expected end, which is certain. Well, those slick preachers have used that verse as a capstone to justify their avarice, their greed, their lusts, and their $10 million mansions, their Rolls Royces, their airplanes, their yachts, and their lavish lifestyles. And they're nothing more than motivational speakers, carnival barkers, and revived snake oil salesmen. They use Jesus and twist the scriptures to gain control over their millions of followers while picking clean their pocketbooks. Smooth talking pickpocketers. Was Abraham rich? Was Solomon rich? Was David rich? Yes. But you can't take their lives out of context. You have to consider who they were, their relationship with God, and their purpose. And not one of them stood up to preach a prosperity gospel. So today, we'll let the word of God speak for itself. Blow these con artists clean off their putrid platforms. I know some of the things that need to be addressed. For example, we've heard many of them say that Jesus was wealthy, that his garment was worth so much money that they cast lots for it. Or another one, they carried around a big sack of money, that Judas had the money bag, and it was by no means empty, it was full of gold. Of course, those of us who are born again of the Spirit can easily recognize these bogus claims. But we have to remember that there are millions upon millions who are following these deceivers, and some of the churches are even selling their books in their bookstores. Well, they should stop pandering to these wolves and have a giant book burning. So was Jesus wealthy, as many of them claim? Matthew chapter 8, verses 19 to 20. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Really? No ten million dollar mansion? Well, how about the money bag? Was it overflowing? Matthew chapter 17 verses 24 to 27. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He saith, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children, or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. That take, and give unto them for me and thee. Well, that doesn't sound like he had a lot of spare pocket change. I've seen these preachers walking up and down on their platforms, braggarts, facelifts, $1,500 suits, making outrageous claims with their subtle or forceful demands. Slick seducers. They all have a persona, a game plan, prayer cloths, healing handkerchiefs, sowing seeds into the ministry that God will reward you tenfold, whatever works to compel you to give, give, give. And oh yes, as they smugly say, God made them wealthy, and if you have enough faith, he'll do the same for you. Really? What does Jesus have to say? Luke chapter 18, verses 18 to 27. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit? 
inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. I wonder why they never preach about that. Go and sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. Well, because they're not interested in being poverty preachers. After all, they're prosperity preachers. They're not looking for treasure in heaven. I heard one of these preachers say, I don't want to wait to walk on streets of gold. I want streets of gold right here, right now. And dumb and dumber follow after them. Oh, one thing I want to explain. Many people over the years ask me about a camel going through the eye of a needle. But again, we need to study scripture and the culture. At the city gate, there was a small space at the bottom, rounded like the eye of a needle. And that's what they called it. In the evening, after the gate was closed, the only way to bring your camel in was through that opening, the eye of the needle and you had to take all of his pack off his back and he had to get down low and squeeze through that opening. It wasn't easy and it couldn't be done if it was burdened down with a lot of weight or goods on its back. Just an interesting side note. When those high rolling preachers tell you that Jesus was rich, they are directly contradicting scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich. Well, thank you, Lord. We are rich, rich in spirit, inheritors of the kingdom, children of the king. Amen. Well, let's read a few more scriptures. The word of God amply deals with this subject. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19 says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Matthew chapter 7 verses 19 to 33. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thine whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve both God and mammon. The word mammon comes from the Greek word mammonas. Similar root words exist in Hebrew, Latin, Aramaic, Chaldean, and Syriac, and they all translate to money, wealth, and material possessions. So you cannot serve God and money, or wealth and material possessions. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit? unto his stature. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the 
Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There are so many scriptures that deal with this topic. You find them throughout the Bible, in Psalms, Proverbs, over and over. God shines the light on this topic from all angles. We can use money, but we don't want money to use us. A couple of years ago, one of these well-known preachers had $600,000 stolen from the safe. That was just cash on hand from two days collection. Just think about it. Sometimes they have too many worldly expensive possessions and the light begins to shine so they will often begin other charities, orphanages, shelters, etc. to put a compassionate face on that they're giving back. But they're not using their salary. They just found a way to collect more money doesn't cost much to put up an orphanage in these impoverished countries. Pocket change for these folks. And they can bring in a thousand times more in donations. We've learned a lot from Bangladesh. Right. Always, always research the ministries that you're giving funds to. Often the ones that are doing the most advertise the least because they don't have the money to squander on large mailouts and simply walk by faith and trust the Lord to supply the needs. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. There definitely is a great need in the body, but it is not to line the pockets of these prosperity preachers. Right. As God's children, we are rich in more ways than we could count. Or no, Proverbs 15, 6. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. James chapter 2 tells us not to give more respect to those who are rich. And verse 5 says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Ephesians 1, 6-7 To the praise of the glory glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 2 7 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Psalm thirty seven sixteen A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Psalm forty nine six to seven They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Proverbs eleven four Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Proverbs 11.28 He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Proverbs 13.7 There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Proverbs 14.24 The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. Proverbs 23.4 Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. There are hundreds more scriptures on this subject. But the lust of the flesh and the deceitfulness of riches will undoubtedly keep these snake oil preachers in business for some time yet. All riches abound in Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 6, 8-11 But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience. If we are rich in faith, faith in Christ, we are rich indeed. Yes, amen. Well, may you be blessed and a blessing. If you have any questions or comments, write to us at Feed My Sheep, Post Office Box 694, Station, Maine, Port Coquitlam, BC, V3B6H9, or email us at feedmysheep at shaw.ca, or check us out on Facebook or our website at www.fmsdisciple.com. May you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Until next time. People get